old. With God, all things are possible. And all power belongs to God. It is written, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of whom is reward. Yes, a good reward to every marriage. As God actually entered time through the womb of Virgin Mary, so did God enter time through my womb. Now, listening to my testimony, when I got married to my husband, we were living happily without problems. I never knew that however joyful life may be, it must have its tempting hours. My husband loves me so much, and he cares for me as the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. Great love was existing between us. We hardly had problems. But three years later, I couldn't conceive. Tongues started wagging. People started passing false rumors. The members of my husband's family assembled together and found occasion against me, which was my not giving birth to a child. My mother-in-law became more interested in this case. She was very angry and mad with me. She does not want to set her eyes on me. She calls me all sorts of names. Good for nothing woman. My husband and I started visiting hospitals. Going from one hospital to another for solution. The first hospital we visited after several tests were carried out. The doctor diagnosed dangerous damages in my womb. He affirmed that the damages had resulted to infertility in me. My husband couldn't believe what he had. He became angry with the doctor. We left the hospital for another one. Since then, we have been going from one hospital to another. From house of prayer to house of prayer. Yet, there was no solution. My husband's relation made me a subject of laughter and mockery. I could not talk in my husband's house. I was treated like a house help. I was regarded like a stranger. The sense of belongingness was not there. I was always in a sorrowful spirit. When others are sleeping, enjoying their sleep, I will wet my pillow with uncontrollable tears. I was crying by the reason of my affliction. Whenever you see a woman looking desperately for the fruit of the womb, pity her. More deep I think every day. I gave thought to my situation. My husband's family advised him to marry another woman. He refused because he loves me so much. He and I kept on visiting hospitals, taking various types of treatment, all to no avail. I felt very worried, asking why I should be in this problem and how long these difficult times will last. We went to hospitals in other states. We have been to Port Harcourt, Calabar, Enugu to mention but a few. Without hesitation, we went to these hospitals on people's recommendation, not considering distance and cost, but a pretty good effort failed. The doctors were still saying the same thing, singing the same old song. In the process of searching for solution, my husband lost his job for accepting himself from office. This simply compounded our problems. Things became so hard and very tough. We were subjected to critical management. I didn't know what came upon my marriage. Every minute my face was better in tears. But weeping did not solve my problem. Later we went to a renowned hospital in Lagos. The tiny doctor out of pity advised us to go for child adoption. I supported the doctor's piece of advice. But my loving husband refused his consent to the doctor's advice. God is an instructor. And the word of God is a channel of instruction. In the Bible, God instructed husbands to love their wives. My husband acted in obedience to God's command. But his people saw God's instruction as foolishness. Not knowing that the foolishness 
foolishness of God is wiser than men. Hmm. I am talking about places I went with my husband. I don't want to mention some of the places I went alone with my sympathizing friends. My good friends took me to so many harbor homes and native doctors, giving me the assurance that I will conceive. In all these places, I did not get solution. To me, it seems my problem could not be solved. I didn't know that God was working and proposing an answer for my problem. It was a troublesome and traumatic experience. I don't wish any child of God to experience it. But in all this, my husband was patient and compassionate. He knows that our suffering was not God's doing. With great surprise, his sisters who supported our union from the onset turned out to be fully against me. They said I had my husband with charm. That I used magical sentences to talk to my husband, covering him from seeing other women. All sorts of rumors were going round. It was rumored that I don't have room. My eyes poured out tears unto God. I was always in the bitterness of soul. I didn't know that I had been under a curse. My stepmother laid a curse on me that I would not conceive all the days of my life. This is a woman that I love so much. Anything I gave to my mother, I gave her also. Not knowing she was the one responsible for all that I've been passing through. Her reason for this was that I married before her daughter. By the time we discover why we have been in this problem, our marriage was getting to 18 years. One day my mother-in-law came and ordered me out of the house. My husband came out with me. She was furious. Suddenly she brought out her knife, threatening to stab herself if I did not leave her son's house. She held the knife firmly to herself. We looked at her curiously, and her eyes were red. I was frightened. Then I knew she really meant to stab herself. His mother was angry with him for taking a foolish decision of not getting married to another woman. I wept and wept, begging her on my knees, but she turned deaf ears, insisting that I should go to my parents' house. All she needed was a grandchild. I cried my eyes out with a broken heart. When we saw that she was not listening to her pleas, and there was no way to calm her down, my husband pleaded with me to take some of my things and go to my parents' house and stay for some time. A lot of people condemned her actions. After thinking for a while, not knowing what fate had in store for me, I diligently obeyed my husband. I packed and went to the village. My husband promised visiting me in the village. My father is late. I stayed with my mother. If my father were to be alive, with all the disgrace, he wouldn't allow me to go back to my husband. My family members frowned at their actions and ill treatment. I stayed with my mother for two years. During my stay in the village, my husband was visiting as he promised. Later, he came and brought me back to his house. When I came back to the city, I had already built my hope on Christ Jesus. I had decided not to go to anywhere in search of solution. I prayed without season, telling God to intervene in my case as the God of intervention. When I came back, the fight was fierce. But God said I should not fear. I looked to Christ, the author and finisher of my faith. My husband's family came up with the issue of a new wife. Since he refused to adopt a child, I supported them for peace to reign in their family. My house was in a chaos. There is nothing else I could do than to welcome the idea. Since to them, that was the best solution. The date of the traditional marriage was fixed. Thanks to God Almighty for that festival Wednesday morning that I woke up with complaints of fever and loss of appetite. It was four months to the date fixed for the marriage engagement. My husband, in his usual caring 
a loving manner, suggests that we should go to the hospital, attributing it to be symptoms of malaria. We went to a nearby hospital for malaria test. The result was negative. The doctor advised me to do pregnancy test. We were reluctant to do it. At last, it was done. When the result of the pregnancy test came out, we saw smiles on the doctor's lips. He congratulated us and said, the result of the test showed positive. We could not believe his report. I collapsed. Then the doctor revived me. I saw tears of joy flowing from my husband's eyes. My husband quickly informed his family on the latest developments. The news circulated the whole village. God in the multitude of his mercy and his great power canceled the slated marriage plans by compensating me adequately at the right time. Nine months later, I was delivered of a bouncing baby girl. The joy of birth was chorus in my family. Jesus gave me my undeniable miracle at the appointed time. I became a wonder to many people. They did not have the understanding that where things look impossible, that is where God works. And when things go wrong, He, Jehovah, will make it right. Today, I am a proud mother of two boys and a girl. This shows that prayer is powerful and God answers prayer. God is a barrenness bulldozer. If Jehovah in his infinite mercy could remove the embargo that hindered me for 23 horrible years and lifted my husband from grass to grace, my husband is doing amazingly well in business. That same God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask will do it for you. No matter how long it has taken, though it tarry, it must surely come to pass says the book of Habakkuk. God is not after the duration, but is concerned with the fulfillment of his words. For a thousand years, is just but a day in his sight. He exalts his word above his name. The God who does what no man can do. The Lord who appreciates your problems. Who is not unaware of it, will do it for you. He will visit your ugly situation. And put joy in your heart. Stop weeping. Stop crying. Stop complaining about your condition. Don't do it yourself. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In vain you struggle to get free without Christ. For by strength shall no man prevail. And God has not finished with you. Don't care about what people are saying about you. Be concerned with God's report. And believe in his good report. Learn to be patient. For good things are always gradual. God is a master planner. God is an invisible worker in action. God is an achiever. At last you will achieve. God is a victor. You must be victorious. God is a winner. You must win every battle. To the barren, the Lord said, sing. To you who have not born, the Lord said you should break forth into singing. Sing aloud, you that have not labored with child. Do not fear. You will not be ashamed, nor be disgraced. Neither will you be forsaken. When the hand of God touches your womb, you will not remember the shame of barrenness and childlessness. For more are your children, says the Lord. With your heart, long to see it fulfilled. Lord, let this testimony minister grace and peace to their hearts. Amara la 
Appreciation, a wonderful package. I thank God for uh, the lady's life. As you can see, there's a message for you out there to always hope that one day God will answer your prayers. It's a true life story. I thank God for allowing us to finish this work. And um, I say, to him all glory and honor. He deserves every praise. Thank God for actualizing everything for us. And to my parents, I thank them for their support, for encouraging me to this point. Um, I thank God also for the producer Mr. Peter Oka and his wife, Onyechi, who happens to be my sister. I thank God for the director, Femi, and good news, who says I shouldn't forget his name. <laughs> for the makeup artist, um, and mm, for everybody, the dancers, mm, the backups, everybody, everybody, I say thank you for your hard work. To all husbands, wives that are in similar situation, I am telling you today that if you trust in God, you are patient because any good thing in life, whether be it your job, be it anything, it does not come easy. No matter what people are saying, don't go to native doctors. You know it will not work for you. They give you with the right hand, they take with the left. They make your life miserable at the end of the day. To my fans, those that uh, are really making this possible. So for me, I want to thank you for your support. I want to thank you because I know you go out there and buy the case. I don't borrow. <laughs> go and buy your own, have it in your house. And um, I pray that God will meet you at a point of need in everything you are doing in your life in Jesus name amen Bonne 
trouble and temptation. He faced all and won. Because he won, we have the confidence that we shall certainly win. He won a real victory. He gave to all who receive and believe in his name the power of victory. Every pang and bitter truth, there is a sure relief from God. Jesus will speak the assuring word that sets you free. You are academically balanced, but no job. Because of evil royal statue that stands as Babylon in your life. You have been wandering, looking for help. You have been idle, wandering from house to house, from office to office, suffering weary days with sad complaints. You've been having wearisome nights, laboring day and night, but Satan hindered you. Don't be moved by this affliction. Jesus is appointed to you. He maintains the cause of the afflicted. He is faithful. You've been asking, Lord, where is my portion in the land of the living? The Lord is your portion. He will exalt you to possess your possession. Don't be impatient. Wait for the Lord. He will repay you handsomely for your suffering. For the delay, He will restore double unto you. He will supply all your needs according to His riches in Christ Jesus. When the storms of life are raging, there is a place of refuge for you, which is in the shadow of God's hands. The Lord will free you from fear, doubt, and plight of sorrow. You are the product of God. Anything that happens to you is for a purpose. Every crooked path, the Lord will make straight.
finally comes. Some may ask, isn't God powerful enough to end suffering? God has promised to end suffering. You cannot fight problems, trials, and temptation. All we can do is nothing unless God intervenes, blesses, and changes situations. Job said, I'll wait till my change comes. Wait for your change will come. You are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. You are perplexed, but not in despair. I call it a light affliction, which is for a moment. In all this, be joyful always. Like Joseph, when he was in prison. Fill up your soul constantly with joy by singing hymns. When enemies and Satan strive to enjoy you, and all their acts employ, God will return what seems hand into everlasting joy. To those whose feet were pushed away for success, that good Lord will put your feet on the right path. Your feet will not slip. This time, your feet will not be swept off. Maybe things are not going the way you had planned. Somebody whom you trusted has disappointed you. You can no longer train your children in school because of difficulties. You can no longer pay for your house rent. That very building that has been under construction for so many years, you have not been able to complete it due to lack of finance. There are many businesses you are in for yourself, but you have been in a financial strait. Nobody is eager to help. You walk from dawn till dark, but you are faced with a problem of the more you struggle, the less you achieve. And it seems to you as if your world has come to an end. Cleave unto God. When God remembers you, your case will change. When God steps into your life, those who stood against you will bow. There is no circumstance beyond his control. There is no situation he cannot handle. Maybe there are one or two things you've been praying and fasting for. You think God has forgotten you. He has not. In no distant time, you will smile. of the 
wicked ones. For we are not of them that draw back to perdition. The past should not be remembered. Forget the things which are behind. Reach unto the things which are before. Look not on the things which are seen, but on the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are forever. Walk by faith and not by sight. That which the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palm worm have destroyed, Jesus will restore and redeem your loss. The bride eyes not her garment, but her dear bridegroom's face. Look unto the face of Jesus Christ. For he said in the Bible, Those that seek me shall find me early. That dark has been the night, but death spring is at hand. Look forward for the dawn of happy days. Cry no more. There will be joy in the morning. To the hungry, the Lord will feed you. That which will be set on thy table should be full of hardness. You will eat and be abundantly satisfied with the fullness of the Lord. As you have been taking the water of affliction, home affliction, ancestral affliction, and barrenness affliction, the Lord will make you to drink of the river of his pleasure. You that trust in the Lord, but face with problems, the Lord will continue to show his loving kindness. None have rest, for none are free from problems. Some are hiding their problems, looking unto Jesus for help. Oh, Lord. 
Lord share that desire come. The Lord will bless your latter end more than your beginning. Don't believe that God wants you to suffer. Suffering can bring out the best in you. And the trial God allows can build your faith. You shall return and come to Zion with songs. And everlasting joy shall be upon your head. Sorrows and signs shall flee away. The Lord will cause you to inherit substance. The Lord will give you his blessing that makes rich and has no sorrow. Patient is to watch and wait. Courage is to keep every fainting soul. Faith is the only sacrifice. Trust in the Lord and find a sweet relief. Take comfort in the word of God. Be assured it will not last long. Knowing the word we help you cope with something. May the God of all grace, who has called you unto his eternal glory by Christ, after that you have suffered, we make you perfect, establish you family, strengthen and settle you. Now the Lord Jesus Christ, himself and God, even our Father, which had loved you, we give you everlasting consolation. Oh, <laughs> 